Okay, here's the um, second, well, the third game, the game after the positional chess master demonstrated their skills. So in this game, we really wanted to try and not give uh, Stockfish the advantage per se in terms of, in my own brain, thinking that they're doing something extra special when they genuinely aren't. It was my fault I gave them that last game. So in this particular game here, try to keep it as basic as possible, simple capture. It's all pretty straightforward stuff, that's not anything that you haven't seen from us before. So the knights come down, ordinarily we just push the pawn here just to stop this pawn. And then if we go on castle, so that's pretty straightforward in its own self. Then the bishop comes down and attacks. Obviously he's got a two on one there, so the bishop is looking to attack because we'd lose this pawn if we didn't. Not looking to defend, if you want to call it that. Okay, so that's all straightforward, nice, simple, steady. So they castle. So our manoeuvres are either looking to come out here, bring the bishop here, then get castled ourselves if we're allowed to. We do have the little shoe here, but castling is probably key for us. On the face of it, you could take as well, but um, we don't we don't do that because it's elevating the queen don't want them in our face at this moment in time it's a bit, bit too early king's not even got it's not had its coffee and slice of toast or anything but based on the last game definitely looking to see what magical maneuvers he can bring out of this basic opening so that we don't fall foul of bad position right from the start So I think we're realising that there's nothing really magical going on here. So a simple manoeuvre of the knight bringing it out or one of the bishops to actually go and castle really does make sense. But it's strange when you have a game like, you had, like we had in the last one, you think suddenly there's going to be magic coming. The basic manoeuvres that we know, then they're going to find a different quirky way of actually dealing with it. And then you come to your senses and go, no, just bring the knight out. There's nothing that they can do that can really mess that up. So they bring the knight out. Again, not thinking too far ahead, just basically bringing the bishop out, getting ready for castling, keeping it all nice and safe. It's showing plus 0.9 at the minute. Then the knight comes down attacking the bishop. So. In essence, really, you could go on castle, uh, you could shoe the bishop, but we're not got castle. So king safety is key for us, really, in this instance, because the queen can always take back the um, knight if he takes the bishop. But I can see how Stockfish was doing things to try and make me not get castled, you know. And then they push this pawn down, it's um, leaving space in front of their king which is a bit of a weakness, but you have to be able to do something against it. It's all right saying the pawns are pushing down, but if you can't do anything about it, then it's a strength in their eyes. So the pawn has pushed down supporting the pawn. Like we say, we could shoe, could bring the knight across here, tuck in the bishop. I do like that sort of manoeuvre of swishing the knight across if the bishop's there ready to attack. I sometimes the computers don't like that sort of manoeuvre though. So we bring the knight across with the bishop attacking. As you can see the gauge bar has just gone plus one seven. So it doesn't like that. Then the knight takes and obviously the queen can take. So that's not um, a big issue really. So we can capture quite nicely here, we're on the bishop and then they bring the bishop back. 
At this point I did think, well they probably lost a bit of tempo bringing the bishop back, which is good for us. But how do we take advantage of that? Nothing worse than the knight sitting here or here quite nicely, so I think simply just pushing the pawn up here and just looking to see if there's any other magical manoeuvres that can potentially attack. Can come here, it can come there with the bishop. Simple pushes here. So it all looks pretty straightforward, so it looks like um, just from my own sort of style system, um, I just like to block this knight from coming down here. Might not be the best, but in my head that's the way to go. Is there any other magical situations? I'm basically looking to get my pieces working together as best possible. And then I feel like I'm not being disheveled or I'm being managed or controlled around the board in my own head. Because eight times out of ten it's usually not me being managed at all, it's just me managing the expectation of what I think the opponent is doing and they're not actually doing anything special but I then create something special and then it goes wrong because then I'm giving them the advantage because I'm thinking they're playing better than I think they are and that can cause big problems when you think that you overestimate the opponent's skills So we go for simple. So then they push down onto the knight. So the knight has to go somewhere. So obviously coming back here makes sense because um, going here we're going to get taken. We're blocked here. So we just bring the knight across. So that makes sense. Expecting maybe this coming here, that type of thing. Obviously we can just jump back into this space. So that might be a bit futile. But they could think, well, we're elevating our pawns, so... So the bishop comes down. So at this point here now, the knight, I don't want it getting attacked for not doing anything. So I think basically attacking the bishop here, again, makes sense. Nothing can attack it. And um, plus we're heading towards his king area with some type of thought process. So at that moment it does make sense, but we have to be careful that we don't get trapped. Then this pawn move comes down. Okay, so it makes makes pretty much sense at this moment. The mantra knights hunt the bishops in our mantra. So it seems like it's a simple capture at this point. So the queen captures. So feeling quite good because we do have like a two on one on this situation. The only thing that extra is actually protecting there. So if we can push this pawn up and, and get this knight off the board, obviously he's gonna come and look to defend. So maybe we'll come and support here to try and get this knight away. Then at least we can win the pawn. That's my thought process, I'm thinking, but yeah, people, he can do something else to prevent that. He can just bring his rook here to defend, all that sort of stuff, and then does that improve his position? Well, yes, because he's opposite our queen. So we start pushing through, being mindful of the potential for the rook coming through, and they do push the pawn down. So at this moment in time, nothing else is happening. So in essence, we could just push here, to get the support and push on to this knight. So that didn't take too much thinking about because I'd already thought about it. Then the rook comes, but it's it's gone to the other side. It's not opposite our queen, so I'm not too panicked about that at this moment. 
Um, I don't know if he was looking to do this sort of stuff, but I think we can still continue quite nicely with attacking the knight. Just keeping it as simple as possible. So I'm fairly happy with what we've done so far up to this point. Because we've kept it simple and appropriate targeting. Smaller pieces attacking higher pieces. So currently we've tapped the knight, so then the knight does move. So we do have free reign. Do we take with the queen? But then if we take with the queen, maybe he then takes the pawn uh, with the rook. Then we take the queen. So I probably plumped for the knight because of that aspect. Because the knight is also protecting the pawn as well. But these little things you have to think about. Because whatever you capture, then you, you're leaving space for something else to be captured or improve in their position. So we do capture with the knight. They bring their rook down. It is definitely off-putting when you're playing a long play game and um, Stockfish just whips out the moves dead quick. Um, so now the, the rook is actually on. So we can actually support the knight with the pawn so we don't need to move it because there's nothing small that can actually attack it. It could go for an exchange but it's an exchange for an exchange so fairly comfortable with that. So I'm happy keeping the knight in this position because it seems to be managing a few nice little squares going on around the board so the rook moves up now at this point here um, I immediately did see this and I thought right yes that means my knight can move anywhere because I've got an x-ray through to his rook So I was thinking about it and thinking about it I thought yes this is going to be a good touch this is going to get me towards the king area but I'm also going to be winning a piece so it doesn't matter how long you take over a move um, you, you still got to hold the responsibility for that move uh, going forward so this felt like a really nice move bringing this through here felt really comfortable with that then they pushed down onto the bishop so at this point here I thought this is the opportunity to actually grab this rook by attacking his queen but not realizing that the rook can actually take the knight <laughs> I got carried away with my own genius you know uh, so I thought okay a smaller piece is going to have to attack a higher piece then so bring my bishop through and attack the queen let's not lose any sleep looks like we've got a position around their king area their rook is in the center of the board and that's a big no no it's not linked up with this rook this bishop's jammed in the only piece that's active is this knight and the queen at the moment so can we make something of it so bring the queen up now this is all a big swindle now so I'm bringing the queen up here towards the king area um, can't take this pawn you know I can't go into this square here so it is a massive swindle so they move their uh, king so we move our rook facing the the queen these things can happen in over the board games especially with the players that I'm going to be playing against and then obviously we do have a magical touch which is the bishop actually putting a check on the king and we win the queen for free so out of them a, a bit of a blunder uh, we come up trumps positionally so the king moves out of the way so then obviously we can take the um, queen with the rook Okay, so that was uh, very lucky but it's a good practice tool playing at this level so the rook comes down looking to actually grab a piece of action but the knight is undefended the rook was defending the knight and this is why I like playing this level 4 because it does play like a human 
And even in that last game, I'd say he was playing like a human because at the end of the day, I gave him those positions. So we can take the knight. Then the bishop's looking to make space for the rook, but obviously the queen can... Oops, gone a bit previous, gone a bit previous. So the queen can put a check on the king. And then at this point here, the only place it's got to go really is here. Bishop looking to come here, then it's like basically checkmate because the king doesn't have anywhere to go. And so really chuffed with that um, situation.